Hey, um, Attached is my second practice and it is focusing on boat pose and the core, which is amazing. Um, a few notes before we begin. Uh, if you have, there's a couple balance exercises in there. So if you have any issues with balance or you're not so sure on your feet quite yet, uh, feel free to grab a chair or you can practice by a wall and grab a wall just to keep you um, safe and supported while you work on your balancing. Um, also through the practice, I want everyone to remember to engage the core, even if you're not doing something that seems like an active core practice, um, still continue to engage that core because a lot of poses, most poses have a lot to do with the core, even if it's not focused on it. Um, what else? I'm practicing outside for this one because it's lovely outside and I want to kind of soak it up before the full extent of the South Louisiana summer drifts into our lives. And I came into this practice um, through a visualization that I used to do. I was, and I kind of still do actually, I do it all the time still. Um, and it was during an especially difficult moment in my life. And I started, you know, I, I have a lot of issues connecting my, how do I say it? Connecting my thoughts and emotions or expressing my emotions in a way. I, you know, I'm very disconnected from them. So as a practice, what I try to do is because I'm very visual, um, I do a sort of moving picture exercise for what that feeling is, which feels kind of basic, but that's where I'm at. And um, so I take the emotion, I take the feeling, <clears throat> and I sort of go, okay, what does this look like? What's the moving picture of this? Or what's the painting of this? Um, what's the movie of this? And then it's easier for me to locate and express that emotion. So I was going through this really difficult time and, uh, and was really disconnected from it. And that's kind of the first step is, is connecting with these difficulties and these emotions. So um, I was in, you know, meditation and I was concentrating on this feeling a little bit, you know, and like, you know, drifting in and out with it and sort of allowing it to, to be around. And suddenly I saw this vision of sort of me in a vast, dark, black sea, right? With a boat, on a boat, you know, kind of crouched up in a ball um, with the sea battering me on all sides. You know, and every time I would stand up, I would kind of get side swiped and, and fall back over again. And then I'd stand up and fall down again. And it was just this feeling of terror and powerlessness and fear and almost giving up. Um, and I thought, that's it. That's how I feel right now. And I could then use that image, you know, in, in moments of quiet and focus on it and sit with it and sort of just stare at it, you know, stare at that feeling, stare at that emotion, stare at that scene and really dig into it, you know? So I started doing that and sitting with it because it's really important in those times um, of stress to focus on them and become present with them and, and really be aware of those moments so that you can begin to study them and learn from them and progress forward. You know, you can't progress forward until you accept where you are um, and the reality of where you are. Um, so I was doing that. And at some point in that study, I saw myself in the midst of this visualization in the sea um, standing up and sort of grounding my feet in the boards of the boat in the giant sea and uh, 
and saying to myself, okay, you have to get up. You are the captain of this boat. And then I saw myself looking to the wheel of the ship and saying, and you are the ship's wheel. And you are the mast and the sails and the sea and the storm. And I was able to see myself in all of those things, even the great big terrifying things that even the things that terrified me. And when you see that connection, when you see the connection in that bigger version of yourself, that's when you can begin to steer yourself to calmer waters, um, which is still a practice every day. Um, but it's amazing and profound the change that occurs when you allow yourself to be that bigger version because when you come at everything with fear, when you're terrorized and afraid, it keeps you small. And it keeps you cowering. And when you can accept and connect with things that terrify you most, you become bigger and bigger and bigger until you are until you realize how strong you are and how in control you are of your whole situation. There is a clear path. You just have to take it. So that's my boat story. It's a good one. Um, I would recommend sort of any of those techniques if you have problems connecting with, with, your, with your emotions <laughs> like I do. Um, it's fun to think of little vignettes of what that feeling is. Um, but anyway, we'll, uh, we'll begin our practice shortly. Grab water, grab towels and props and blocks and straps and chairs and walls and everything. And uh, we'll begin. And hello again. Um, before we begin our practice, I'd like everybody to find a nice, comfortable seated position in either easy pose or Virasana Hero's Pose. Um, if you're in easy pose, you can put a blanket under your bump. If you're in Virasana, you can go on your knees um, with a blanket under your knees and a block under your bum. And wherever you are, place your hands on your knees or the tops of your thighs, palms up if you're feeling open and receptive to the waves of the universe and palms down if you're feeling a little bit more introverted. And allow your eyes to softly close. Call attention first to your breath. The miraculous ebb and flow of breathing. The rhythmic rise and fall of your chest. Bring your attention now to the place where your body meets the floor. Allowing yourself to yield to the tremendous power of gravity, pulling you to the earth. Bring your attention to what you feel in the room. 
the floor beneath you, the place where your hands meet your legs, or your knees, or your thighs. the air in the room as it touches your skin. Call your attention to what you hear in your space, in your time. What is the soundtrack of your moment? And when you are ready, allow your eyes to softly open. And we will begin our practice. And as we begin our practice, we'll find ourselves on our bums with a folded towel underneath us. Um, if you are in easy pose already, you can just extend your legs out in front of you. If you are in Varasana, go ahead and pull the block from underneath your bum, put a blanket underneath your seat, and, and extend your feet in front of you. With active toes, active feet, go ahead and on an inhale, stretch up high to the sky. And as you exhale, hinge forward at the hips, reaching for the space just past your toes. If you, at this point, are not able to reach your toes, you can take a strap and, you know, putting a side of the strap in each hand, wrap the strap around the ball mounts of your feet. And if you can reach your toes and you're looking for a deeper stretch, you can take a block and press the block against the ball mount to your feet and wrap your hands around it and hinge forward. On your next inhale, you can go ahead and lift back up, stretching high to the sky. And on an exhale, we'll go ahead and hinge forward again at the hips, reaching to the space past your toes for a forward fold. I'm still swimming It hits me again And on your next inhale you can drop your block, drop your straps, go ahead and sit back up, reaching your hands high to the sky and then bring them down back down to your mat. From here, you're going to bend your right knee, crossing your right leg over your left and landing that right foot to the outside of your left knee. Stretch up on an inhale, and on an exhale, step your right hip back and twist towards the right, landing your right arm to the space behind your right hip and wrapping your left arm around your right knee. If you're looking for a deeper twist, you can go ahead and put that left elbow on the top of your right knee and twist deeper. Inhale, and as you exhale, release your arms, release your twists, and we'll sit back to center. Cross your left leg over your right, landing your left foot so that it's on the outside of your right knee, grounded into the earth. And inhale, and as you exhale, twist towards the left. Landing that left arm to the space behind your left hip, bringing your right elbow, wrapping it around your left knee, or if you want a deeper twist, lengthening on the inhale, twisting deeper on the exhale. 
And on your next exhale, you can undo your twist, straightening your left knee, coming back to a seated position with your legs extended in front of you, and just ground your peace fingers into the earth. Connecting with the earth, grounding yourself, grounding your sit bone, keeping active legs and breathing. And go ahead and release your hands from the earth and scoot around on your mat so that the soles of your feet are at the top of your mat, your knees bent and your seat grounded into the earth. Inhale, stretch up to the ceiling. And on an exhale, we're going to roll back vertebrae by vertebrae onto our backs. You can either bring your elbows to the earth first and lower yourself that way. You can grab the backs of your thighs and uh, to assist you in rolling back down. Or you can start with your hands in front of you and roll back, pressing each part of your spine to the earth as you go. Start at the lower part of your spine and like a wave, work yourself up to the top and landing with your hands in a T. And when you're ready, you can extend your left leg, keeping it active with your toes pointed towards the sky, and bring your right foot up so that the sole of your foot is pointed towards the sky. From here, you can either take your peace fingers and grab at that right toe with your right peace fingers. Um, if you have to lift your right shoulder off the ground to do that, then I would suggest grabbing a strap wrapping it around the ball mount of your right foot and holding each side of the strap in each hand. Pushing the ball mount of that foot against the strap and flexing the toes towards your face. On your next inhale, you can take each side of the strap and bring it into your left hand. Bend your left knee, pushing the sole of your left foot to the earth, and lift your hips a couple inches off the ground, scooting them to the right and dropping them back down. Extend that left foot back out. Inhale, and as you exhale, drop that right foot towards the left, eventually landing it on a bolster or a block or the earth itself. If your right shoulder again lifts off the ground, or you feel any strain in your right knee or calf, take a bolster or a block and land on that. You don't want to overextend yourself. What matters is not the, the how deep you think your twist is getting. It's how productive that twist is, you know, and injuring yourself is not productive. And on your next inhale, you can lift that right foot back up to center, bring your left foot to the earth, Press that left sole foot to the ground, shift your hips back to center, extend your left foot back out. Take your straps and bring them to the right hand. And as you exhale, drop that right foot to about a 45 degree angle to the right. Ball mount of that foot pressed against the strap or pressed to the sky or whatever's lower than the sky, the horizon maybe, I don't know. Keeping that left foot active, your left hip pressed to the earth opening those hips up and on your next inhale bring that right foot leg back to center bend your left knee bringing the sole of your left foot to the earth drop your right sole of foot back to the earth we'll sit here for a second and think about our hips and then extend your right leg out in front of you extending your left foot leg up and wrapping the strap around the ball mount of your left foot or using your peace fingers again. Pressing the ball mount of that foot to the strap. Flex toes, flex towards you. Active right leg, active right foot. On an inhale, go ahead and bend your right knee, bring the sole of your foot to the earth, lifting your hips up, scooting them to the left a small bit, and then dropping them back down. Don't forget to switch the strap from your left hand to your right. And as you exhale, dropping that left foot to the right, left arm extended to a T. Again, if you want to land on a block or a bolster or a blanket, 
Please do it. And on your next inhale, you can lift that leg back to center, bend your right knee, bring the right sole foot to the earth, and shifting your hips back to center, extending the right foot out again, bringing the straps, both sides of the straps to your left hand. Inhale, and on an exhale, drop that foot wide to the left at about a 45 degree angle, pressing that right hip to the earth, keeping that right foot and leg active. Pressing the left ball mount of the foot against the strap or towards the horizon. And on your next inhale, you can bring that left foot back to center. Bend your right foot knee, bringing your right foot back to the earth. Bend your left knee, bringing it back to the earth. Take your strap and put it aside. Rest here for a moment, maybe windshield wiping a little bit. Taking in, doing a little body scan and taking in the, the difference in your hips before and after the stretch. Once you come to a place of stillness, you can straighten your knees, bringing your hands above your head and doing a nice deep stretch. Inhaling, and as you exhale, go ahead and scoot those two feet that you have towards the left corner of your mat and scoot your hands to the left corner at the top of the mat. So we're doing a little banana shape, activating that left side, breathing into that right lung, stretching that right side. And release back to center. Inhale, and as you exhale, scooch those feet seas to the right corner, scooching your hands to the top right corner, activating that right side body, stretching the left, breathing into that left lung. Being a banana on the other side. And, the little white trees don't bend in the breeze. and on your next inhale, come back to center, bring the soles of your feet to the earth, bending your knees. And we're going to roll up. You can do this a few ways. You can either prop yourself up on your elbows and then sit up from there, or you can sit up grabbing at the backs of your thighs to kind of assist you in getting up. Or you can stretch your arms out in front of you and press yourself back to a seated position, trying not to lift those feet off the ground. Once you're there, you can roll over your ankles to find tabletop. Tabletop finds us on all fours with our hips and knees aligned, our shoulders, elbows, and wrists aligned. And we are going to begin with some cat cows. Cat cow is a breath to body movement matching situation. And as you inhale, you can drop your belly to the earth, untucking your tailbone and lifting your chin. As you exhale, you tuck your tailbone in, suck those abs up to your spine and tuck, tuck your chin to your chest. Untuck your tailbone, belly to earth, chin towards sky. Exhale, tuck tailbone, press belly button towards spine, arching that back, matching our breath to body movement, finding our own rhythm. We're going to do six rounds total, so once you've reached six rounds, you can find a place of stillness in your spine, going at your own pace. And 
once you've found that place of stillness, go ahead and scoot your hands about a half hand's length up your mat, extending your right knee, pressing your right toes to the earth, untucking them and pressing them to the earth. We're going to stretch the back leg there of our right leg, pressing our palms against the earth. And on your next exhale, you can release that right knee, tuck your toes back, step your hands back to tabletop, and then drop our hips back towards our heels for child's pose. Inhale, come back to tabletop. From here, we're going to press the palm of our left hand into the earth and lift our right arm straight in front of us so that it lands next to our heel. If you're good here, then stay here. You want a little extra challenge. Begin to lift your left leg behind you for Sun Moon Dog. Keeping that everything energetically squeezed towards the center, activating the backside muscles, pressing palm into the earth. And as you exhale, you can drop that knee, drop that hand back to center, and find tabletop. Rest here for a moment. And then step those hands back once again, about a half hand's length towards the top of your mat, untucking your left toes, lifting your left knees off the ground, and pressing the left toes into the earth. The back of that leg. And your next exhale, you can drop that knee back to the earth. Bring your hands back to tabletop and scoot your bottom towards your heels for child's pose with your knees together. And voices, trust pass Inhale, come back up to tabletop. From tabletop, you're going to press the right palm the into the earth this time, gently lifting like mine, the left the off the ground and bringing your, that left Feed arm your towards agonies, your ear. You want to stay here, friend. Voices, if you want to extra trust pass boost, you can lift that right choices, knee off the ground and extend that fire, right leg behind you. Activating the back like side mine, of your body again, activating your no arms, more. shoulders everything. It's amazing. In your next exhale, you can bring that right knee back to the earth, bring that left palm back to the earth. And when you're ready, tuck those toes, step your palms another full hands length in front of you, lift your hips up on an inhale, and on an exhale, press back to Adho Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Energetically pressing those heels towards the earth, you can paddle out a little bit if you want, making sure that your palms are pressed to the earth, so as if you're pushing something very big away. Your shoulders are neutral, not up at your ears like earrings. And on your next exhale, you can walk your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, rolling up vertebrae by vertebrae. And so you're in a standing position, stretching up for Urdhva Hastasana, and then bringing your arms back down to a T on an exhale. On an inhale, open your arms really wide, finding a nice back bend. And as you exhale, bring those arms into center, crossing them in front of you, right arms crossing over your left. And you hook that left arm around your right, either at the space between your elbow and your wrist, or between your shoulder and your elbow, to stretch that right shoulder. And on your next inhale, you can open your arms nice and wide again, finding a beautiful back bend there. And as you exhale, slowly with control, cross those arms in front of you again, this time your left over your right, and hooking your right elbow around your left arm, either at the forearm or between your shoulder and elbow, to find that stretch on the left side.
Unhook your arms, inhaling, getting a nice back bend. And then bringing your arms up for Urdhva Hastasana, stretching deep. Exhale, come down through prayer, hinging forward at the hips or forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway up, the straight back. Exhale, plant your hands onto the earth and step your right foot back, dropping that right knee to the earth, untucking that right toe, making sure your alignment on your left knee is aligned with your left ankle. And on an inhale, press into the earth, lifting your chest, arms above the head or at hips, breathing for two. And on your second exhale, allowing that left knee to drift forward, bringing your hands up above you or at your hips and finding a nice back bend for Anjanganasana. Squeezing everything together, making sure your hips remain square. And here you can, on your next inhale, you can allow that knee to drift back to center. And then scooting your bottom towards your left, your right heel, straighten that left knee, fitting your seat so that your right butt cheek is kind of on your right heel, and grab a block and put it underneath your left butt cheek. Bring the sole of your left foot to the earth, bending that knee. And we're going to drop our hands behind us with our fingers pointed away from us. And as you inhale, lift your hips up off the earth, pressing the sole of your left foot to the earth, stretching the right front leg. And on your next exhale, you can drop it back to the earth, sitting back up, pulling the blocks from underneath you, finding tabletop, and then plank, and lowering down to the count of five. Four, three, two, one. Untucking your toes, bringing them to the long edge of the mat. Pressing the tops of your feet to the earth, pressing the tops of your thighs to the earth. Lifting your hands off the ground and on an inhale, activating the back for Bhujangasana. Keeping your gaze at the space just in front of your mat. And as you exhale, release. Bring your feet back to center, tucking your toes. Press your palms into the earth and lift up for five, four, three, two, one. And as you exhale, Uddha Padma Vishvanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale and on an exhale, step that right foot forward. Drop that left knee to the earth, untuck that left toe, round the right sole of foot to the earth. And an inhale, lift up, arms above the head or up hips. Breathe here and on your second exhale, allow that right knee to drift forward, finding a lovely back bend by lengthening your spine on Janusa. Inhale, bring that knee back to center, straightening that right knee, sitting your bum back to your heels, putting a block underneath your right butt cheek. Bend your right knee, bringing the sole of the foot to the earth, drop your hands behind you, and on an inhale, Lift those hips up, stretching the left front leg this time. Exhale, release back to the earth. Pull that block out from under your butt and throw it to the side. Come back to tabletop and then plank, lowering again. Untucking those toes, bringing them to the long edge of the mat, pressing into the earth. Lifting your palms up off the earth about an inch, and on an inhale, Bhujangasana, low cobra. You can exhale and release that low cobra back into the earth. Tuck your toes, bring them back to center, press your palms back into the earth, and lift for five, four, three, two, one. And on an exhale, reach back to Adha Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, and on an exhale, walk your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, lift halfway up, exhale, release into the mat. And on an inhale, curl up, vertebrae by vertebrae, sucking everything in towards your abs, circling your arms back, 
stretching up to the sky for Urdhva Hastasana. And on an exhale, coming down through prayer to forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, release back into the earth, pressing those palms into the mat and stepping your right foot back. This time we're going to keep our knee off of the mat and our toes tucked. Inhale, and on an exhale you're going to reach your left hand towards the sky whilst twisting to the left. Anything that's in contact with the earth is actively pressed against it. On your next exhale, you can undo your twist, bringing that left palm back to the earth, stepping your right back foot up a couple of little bops, and turning it to a 45 degree angle, checking alignment again on your left, knee, knee and ankle are aligned, and on an inhale, press those feet into the earth and lift up for warrior one. Your hands can either be at your hips or your arms outstretched above you. Inhale, straightening that front knee, and on an exhale, fold forward, hinging at the hips, keeping your hips nice and square. And you can bring your hands to blocks, bring your palms to the mat. Just squeeze your legs energetically together to make sure those hips are nice and square. Bend that front knee. And on an inhale, lift back up to warrior one. And as you exhale, fold forward all the way, hands touching mat. Step your left foot back to meet your right for plank. Lower, keep our palms on the earth. Inhale, lift up, Kujangasana. Exhale, release back to the mat. Tuck your toes back, lifting up through plank to Adhamukha Shonasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, and on an exhale, step that right foot forward, checking your alignment. Bring your left palm so it's aligned with your left shoulder. Inhale, and on an exhale, bring that right hand up towards the sky. Twisting to the right. Inhale, and on an exhale, bring that right palm back to the earth, stepping that left back leg up a little bit, bringing it to a 45 degree angle, and pressing the sole of your foot to the earth, checking your alignment again on your right side, and on an inhale, lift up to warrior one. Inhale, straightening that front knee, and as you exhale, hinge forward at the hips for Parsvatanasana, coming either to blocks or the earth. Bend that front knee, and on an inhale, warrior one. Hinge forward at the hips, bringing your palms to the earth, stepping your foot back to plank. Lower down, Bhujangasana, again with your palms against the earth to use your back muscles and not your hands to press up. Exhale, release back into the mat. Inhale, press up through plank. Two Adhamukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, and on your next exhale, walk your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, release forward. And as you inhale, curling up vertebrae by vertebrae. And we'll circle our arms back and up for Urdhva Hastasana. And then circling them back down again for Tadasana. Here we're going to make sure our feet are parallel and hips width apart. Soles of feet grounded into the earth. Palms facing forward. Inhale, stretching up for Urdhva Hastasana. And as you exhale, you're going to sit back as if you're sitting in a chair. Take a breath in, and as you exhale, straighten your knees, holding forward at the hips. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, release, planting your hands. And step or jump back to plank, going through your vinyasana, whether it be bhujangasana or chaturanga to upward facing dog and then downward facing dog. And on an inhale, lift your right leg up and then step it into the space between your hands. Bring your left foot up a little bit, turning it at a 45 degree angle. And on your next inhale, lift to warrior one. And from here, you can grab your chair if you need it for balance. Begin to press your right foot into the earth. Straighten your standing leg while 
gently lifting your left foot off the earth and bringing it behind you as we did in Sun Moon Dog. Chest is level with your extended back leg and your hands are at your hips. And slowly with control, keeping an active midsection, bring that left foot down and then stepping up to the top of the mat. Or if you want a little extra challenge, you can try and bring that back foot up kind of in one big step. Press your left solar foot to the earth while lifting the right up to either a strap or your peace fingers around your big toe of your right foot. And on an inhale, extend it in front of you, activating the front of that right leg activating the abs, keeping you nice and strong. Bend that right knee, bringing that foot back in and releasing your fingers from it, and then stepping back to standing. And then slowly with control, step that left foot back to find warrior one. And on an exhale, fold forward, planting your hands to the earth, finding plank position, and then lowering down figure your vinyasana. Eventually, again, finding downward facing dog. And on an inhale, lift your left foot up, heel to the ceiling, toes to the ground. And on an exhale, step it into the space between your hands. Again, we're going to check our alignment on our left side and bring our right foot up a little bit, turning it at a 45 degree angle. And on an inhale, lift to warrior one. Pressing your feet into the earth, activating your midsection. And on your next inhale, as you press your foot into the earth, lifting your right back foot up and straightening your left standing foot to find warrior three. And from warrior three, you can drop your back foot down again, bringing, walking yourself up to the top of the mat, or swing that foot back up in one step. Stretch high to the sky, and on an exhale, tuck that left knee in, grabbing your toe with your peace fingers or wrapping your strap around the ball mouth of your left foot, and extend that left foot out in front of you. Your right hand can be at your hip or stretched up above you by your ears, pressing that right foot into the earth. And as you exhale, tuck that knee back into your chest, releasing your toes, your fingers from your toes. And slowly with control, step that right foot back for warrior one on your left side. And on your next exhale, fold forward. At the hips, bringing your hands to the earth, stepping your left foot back to meet your right, finding plank, and traveling through your vinyasana. Once you find downward facing dog, you can step or jump your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, releasing to the earth. And as you inhale, roll up slowly with control, bending those knees generously to find chair. Hold chair for a few breaths. And on your next inhale, go ahead and press those feet into the earth, straightening the knees and extending your arms above you. Exhale, sit back as if you're sitting in a chair. And on your next exhale, straighten those knees, holding forward at the hips for Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, lift half, halfway up. Exhale, release into the earth, plank in your hands, and step or jump back to plank. From plank, you're going to travel through your vinyasana, whether it's Uzangasana or Chaturanga to Upward Facing Dog and then Downward Facing Dog. And on your next inhale, lift your right foot up, heel to the ceiling, toes to the ground, and step it into the space between your hands, bringing that left foot up once again. On your next inhale, find Warrior One. And as you exhale, press into the earth with that right foot, straightening that right knee and lifting your left foot off the ground for Warrior Three. And on your next inhale, stepping that back, back foot forward so that you're standing at the top of your mat. Bring your, bending your right knee, bring your hand to your right toes or a strap. Extend it out in front of you. Breathing. 
And as you release, we are going to gently let go of that right foot and bending your left knee slightly, cross your right leg over your left. From here you can do eagle arms or you can keep your hands on your hips or in prayer position, activating your core. And exhale, you can unwind your feet, unwind your hands and step your left foot back for warrior one on your right side. And as you exhale, hinging forward at the hips, stepping your right foot back to meet your left to find plank and then travel through your vinyasana once again. Once you find yourself in downward dog, you can on an inhale lift your left foot up, heel to the ceiling, toes to the ground, and on an exhale step into the space between your hands. Bring your right foot up a small bit, turning it at a 45 degree angle, and press those soles of feet into the earth to find warrior one. On your next inhale, you can press your left foot into the earth, lifting your right, keeping your chest parallel to the earth, strong, solid, planted foot on your left, and on your next inhale, you can step your right foot down, finding yourself at the top of the mat once again, and bringing your left toe to your left fingers, or strap, bending that leg out in front of you. Hold it, and as you exhale, Releasing your toes, gently bending that right knee, and crossing your left leg over your right this time. You can do eagle arms once again, or in prayer, or hands and hips, whatever you're most comfortable with. Stay nice and strong, activating your core. And on your next inhale, you can stand up, straightening that right knee, uncross your left leg from your right. Step back to warrior one on your left side. And as you exhale, hinge forward, planting your hands on the ground again. Step your left foot back to meet your right and plank. And travel once again through your vinyasana. And once you find yourself in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog, you can step or jump your feet to meet your hand. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, release into the earth. And inhale, curling up vertebrae by vertebrae, generously bending those knees to find chair. And on your next inhale, pressing those feet into the earth. Straightening those knees and finding Urva Hastasana. Checking your footing once again, making sure your feet are nice and parallel and hips width apart. Inhale, and on an exhale, we're going to sit back as if we're sitting into a chair again. And as you exhale, straightening your knees and folding forward at the hips. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, plant your hands and step or jump back to plank. Lowering through Chaturanga to Upward Facing Dog or Downward Facing Dog or through Bhujangasana to Downward Facing Dog. And on an inhale, lift your right foot up and as you exhale, step it into the space between your hands. Bring your left foot up a little bit, turning in a 45 degree angle, Warrior One. Press that right foot into the earth, lifting that left foot, Warrior Three. And on your next inhale, bringing that left foot down, stepping into the top of the mat or bringing it down in one step. Press your left foot into the earth, bringing, bending your right knee and bringing your right toe up to your right hand. Inhale, extending that knee in front of you. Planting that left foot into the earth. And as you release, you can bend your left knee slightly, crossing your right foot over your left, and finding eagle arms, again on your right side, or prayer, or hands on hips, whatever you want. And on your next inhale, you can straighten that left knee, 
uncrossing the right leg from your left, uncrossing your hands, and stepping your left foot back to find warrior one. And as you exhale, hinge forward at the hips, planting your hands, stepping your right foot back to meet your left, and going through your vinyasana. Finding once again, Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, lifting your left leg up, heel to the ceiling, toes to the ground, and stepping into the space between your hand. Bring your right foot up a little bit, turning at a 45 degree angle. And then your next inhale, lift up to Warrior One. Press that left foot into the earth, lifting the right, activating your core, finding Warrior Three. No, sir, uh I gave you a chance, but you wouldn't take it. And then slowly with control, stepping that right foot back down to the earth, finding the top of your mat, pressing that right foot into the earth, bending your left knee, bringing your left toes to your left peace fingers, and extending that leg out in front of you. Again, you can also use straps. Planting that right foot into the earth, activating your core. And as you release, you can slightly bend that right leg and cross your left leg over your right. Finding eagle arms again on the left side or prayer or hands on hips. Squeezing everything, pressing that right foot into the earth. On your next inhale, you can straighten that right knee, uncross your left from your right, uncross your arms, and step back with your right foot to find warrior one on your left side. Inhale, and as you exhale, plant your hands to the earth, stepping your left foot back to meet your right, finding plank, lowering through your vinyasa. Eventually, finding downward facing dog. Step or jump your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, release. Inhale, curl up vertebrae by vertebrae, generously bending those knees to find chair. And as you inhale, press those feet into the earth, straightening those legs and finding Urdhva Hastasana. Inhale. And as you exhale, we're going to sit back again as if we're sitting in a chair this time with our hands in prayer everything tight squeezing our knees energetically together inhale and as you exhale you're going to begin to twist to your right bringing your left elbow to the inside of your left knee you want to make sure that your knees remain in alignment as you twist and as you exhale, you can release your elbow from your knee, come back to center, press those feet into the earth, straighten your knees, stretching up for Urdhva Hastasana. And as you exhale, come down through prayer again to chair. Inhale deep. And as you exhale, twist to the left, bringing your right elbow to the inside of your right knee. Holding this here, energetically squeezing those knees together, pressing those feet to the earth. And on your next exhale, you can begin to release that twist, coming back to center, pressing our feet into the earth, and stretching up for Urdhva Hastasana. As you exhale, you can come down through prayer, hinging forward at the hips to find forward fold. And we're going to hang here for a bit. And then when you're ready, you can step or jump your feet back for plank. And then drop your knees to the earth, uh, keeping your knees close together. And bring your bum to your heels to find child's pose. Resting here, giving our body a nice little break from all the work that we just did. And on your next inhale, you could find tabletop once again. And then Virasana. Holding here for three breaths. And then from Virasana, sitting on your bum with your feet on the ground and your knees bent. So we can go into boat pose. 
In boat pose, we're going to be sitting with our knees bent, soles of our feet on the floor in front of us. And on an inhale, we're going to rock backwards onto our sacrum. So you're going to rock back, lifting your feet off the ground, keeping your legs parallel to the earth, your back nice and straight, your sacrum grounded into the earth. If you want to grab the backs of your thighs for a little support, that's great. If you want to keep them extended in front of you, that's also great. Um, if you have your arms out in front of you and you're feeling any pain in your lower back, grab the backs of your thighs. Try straightening your back, making sure your back is nice and straight and that your abdomen is activated, that your core muscles are activated. If they're not fully activated, then you're relying on the, your back, which is why you're feeling strain. So you want to make sure that if you're feeling pain, to grab the backs of your thighs and make sure that you're activating your core. And on your next exhale, you can release your feet back into the earth. You can hug your knees a little bit. Think about what you've done. Think about how strong you are. And on your next inhale, you can rock back. You can also place a block between your knees if you want to really feel the full body engagement. Just grab a block, put it between your knees, and squeeze it the whole time. If you're in half boat and you're happy here and you're working hard, that's great. You can stay here. If you want a little extra challenge, go ahead and begin to lower your back to the earth, extending your legs out, lowering them to the ground, keeping your shoulders and arms elevated, pressing your the small of your back and your top of your bum against the earth, keeping your feet and legs elevated, and your chin in neutral for a low canoe. And on your next exhale, you can release your body into the mat, release from half boat, release from your canoe, just release into the earth in all ways. And when you're ready, you can sit up once again by propping your elbows onto the, the earth and pushing your way up, grabbing the backs of your thighs or rolling yourself up. And you can take your block if you have it, squeeze it between your knees, and on your next inhale, go ahead and rock back to half boat, making sure that back is nice and straight, the shins are parallel to the earth, feet activated. If you want to go into full boat by straightening your knees and bringing your arms up to your ears, go for it. It's a nice challenge. You can release your full boat if you went into it. Come back to half boat. From half boat, if you want, you can try lowering once again to low canoe. Again, if you feel any pain, release yourself. You don't want to feel pain. If you're in low canoe and you really just want to do something crazy, you can activate your abs and press back up into half boat. Holding that. And from half boat or low canoe or from wherever you are, just release on an exhale. Release everything into the mat. Bringing the soles of your feet to the mat, bending your knees. And doing a couple little windshield wipers with your knees if you want. Eventually tucking your knees into your chest, wrapping your arms around your shins or the backs of your thighs. And doing a couple rock and rolls. Eventually finding yourself once again, supine on the mat, soles of feet on earth, knees bent. Bring your hands down to your hips, palms facing the earth, and begin to scoot your heels as close to your bottom as you can. On an inhale, you're going to begin pressing the soles of your feet to the earth, whilst lifting your hips, finding a beautiful back bend, flaring your ribcage out, Weight borne in your heels, weight borne in your shoulders, the top of your back. 
And on your next exhale, lower those hips, windshield wipe, bring your knees left and right. And we'll do it again. This time, if you want to do a bind um, with your bridge, that's great. You should do it. Uh, if you want to do an upward facing bow, I'm a full supporter of that too, if it's in your practice. So anyway, we're going to scooch our heels up to our bum as much as we can uh, and work our way into bridge on your next inhale. If you're going for upward facing bow, your hands are at your ears with your fingers pointed towards your shoulders. And as you inhale, you're going to lift your hips up, pressing the soles of feet to the earth. It's important in upward facing bow that you enter it just as you enter bridge pose, beginning with the pressing of the heels to the floor, lifting of the hips, finding that beautiful flare, that beautiful back bend, and then deepening it by straightening those arms. You want your knees to be energetically squoze together. And on your next exhale, you can go ahead and begin to gently, slowly with control, lower those hips to the earth. If you're an upward facing bow, lowering your shoulders and your hips to the earth. You can windshield wiper your knees back and forth. From here, we're going to do a supported fish pose. So we're going to take a block and put it in the middle of your mat lengthwise. So you're going to land so that your shoulder blades are kind of hugging either side of it. It should land kind of where, you know, your mid back, where a bra strap would be. Your legs are extended out in front of you. Your arms are at your side, palms up, chin lifted so the crown of your head is either landing on a towel or a blanket or the mat. I would recommend a towel or a blanket here. And we're just going to breathe into this beautiful back bend. Promotes blood flow to the thyroid, promotes circulation to the head. I am the neck. day, I am the dawn, I am the darkness coming on. Opening that heart. And I am once, I am twice, I am the whole, I'm just a slave. Some call me gone, some call me here None are wrong, none are near I am right now, I am back then I will return, don't ask me when I am the disappointed kiss I am the unexpected harvest Home. I am the sun who runs the farthest I have done wrong, I will do wrong There's nothing wrong with doing wrong And I am faith, I am belief Except for when I'm not I am the teeth of champions I am rust and water rot of the passing seasons I am the brush I am the strokes I'm sickness come to the best of folks I am renewed I am just made I am unchanging I'm a pasture fenced about the edge I am Dakota Thunder raging tracks we've laid above, I am the tunnel running under
gently lift yourself onto one of your elbows and pull that block out from beneath you. Laying on your back, bending your knees to bring the soles of your feet to the earth for constructive rest pose. It's a fairly intense back bend series, so it's important to kind of give your body a minute to soak it all in. And carpets make sense of it all And the sky is all in to go From here you can bring your arms out to a T And on an inhale, cross your right leg over your left Pressing the sole of that left foot into your earth And moving your hips to the right a couple inches Lowering them down And on an exhale, dropping your knees to the left still singing or supine eagle twist. And on your next inhale, you can bring those knees back to center. Press the sole of your left foot into the earth once again, scooching your Hips back to center, uncrossing your right foot, landing on the earth and crossing your left foot over your right. Pressing that right foot into the earth, lift your hips up a little bit, bring them to the left, drop them down, and then drop those knees to the right. And there's a light at the end of the dock, sending green little postcards to a city I love so much in the water. Make sense of her life and wrinkles the back. And on your next inhale, you can lift those knees back to center, press your right foot into the earth, bringing your hips back to center, uncrossing your left leg from the right, resting in constructive rest pose for and a moment. Puffs and collars with people and the sun that was stuck. Before lifting your right foot up once again and crossing it onto your left so that your right ankle lands sort of at the bottom of your left thigh, top of your left knee. You're going to lift that left sole of foot off the ground and bring your arms so that your right arm reaches sort of between the two legs and your left arms around it. You embrace the back of your left thigh and as you exhale, pull that thigh in towards your face. If you find you can't reach around your thigh right now, a strap is a great prop to use for that. Exhale and release that left foot back to the earth, uncrossing your right foot, crossing your left foot now on your right at the top of the knee or bottom of the thigh. And as you inhale, lift that right foot off the earth, bringing your left arm between your legs this time and your right arm around it. And as you exhale, pulling that thigh towards you. And as you exhale, release that right foot back to the earth, uncrossing your left foot, scooching your feet together so that they're touching, and as you exhale, drop those knees to either side for Supabhata Konasana. If you have any strain or discomfort in your knees or inner thigh, you could always take a block, angle it diagonally between the ground and your knee to give you some support. This should not be a painful stretch. In my darkness I remember Mama's words were you to me Surrender to the good law and then wipe your slate clean Take me to your river I wanna go And from here, you can slowly straighten your legs Reaching your hands above you Giving a good stretch before you get into Shavasana
I like to fold a little blanket into a pillow. Make a little head nest. As a man with many crops, come up for air. As my sins flow down the Jordan. Oh, I want to come here and give you every part of me. And Shavasana finds us on, on our head. backs. And my lips are our heads clean. resting comfortably. Our arms to out river. to our sides with our palms up. And our legs stretched out. Sort of in a mini starfish. You don't need to go crazy. If you want to introduce a little relaxation, you can invite a yawn into your jaw. Or a bit just open your jaw and feel the muscles of your jaw and neck loosen just with that one small action. Sometimes it's the smallest things that make the biggest difference. And with each breath, let's feel ourselves getting heavier and heavier, yielding to the earth, yielding to the power of gravity, our chest rising and lowering as waves on the sea. Take me to your river. Joining in the rhythm of life. Lord, please let me know. Take me to your river. Let's call attention first to the crown of our heads. And allow the netting of skin that is your scalp to begin to get heavy and release into the earth. Bring attention now to the space between your eyebrows. Admiring as the muscles begin to loosen become heavy and melt into the earth. Bring your attention to your jaw, unclenching it, removing your tongue from the roof of your mouth. allowing it to become heavy and release into the earth. Bring attention to your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists and hands, marveling as they become heavy and loose, unraveling, and melting into the earth. Bring attention to your chest and back, abdomen, and hips. as they too become heavy and loose, sinking into the earth. Bring your attention to your hips, knees, ankles, and feet. 
and admire as those muscles loosen, becoming heavy, and sink into the earth. Imagine the soft glow of light appearing at your chest, cycling rhythmically as in a lighthouse, calling to you, directing you, showing you the way to safe harbor, This light is inside you. You only have to see it. You are the captain and you are the ship's wheel and you are the mast and the sails and the sea and the storm. And when you're ready, you can begin to invite small movements into your body, wiggling of fingers, wiggling of toes, eventually inviting larger movements, maybe inviting another nice stretch. And then rolling on to your right side, using your right arm as a pillow, and tucking into sort of a loose fetal position. When you're ready, you can press the palm of your left hand into the mat and lift yourself back into a seated position. Allowing your eyes eventually to softly open. Thank you for joining me today on this practice. I hope you enjoyed it. The light in me. Season honors the light in you. Namaste.